Good morning and welcome to your Wednesday devotional. Today we are finishing the book of Proverbs. Every day we read a chapter and we work our way through the Bible and it's always exciting when we finish a book. So today we're finishing Proverbs and tomorrow we start Ecclesiastes, uh, which is my favorite book. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, today for Proverbs 31, I wanted to keep it short and sweet and to the point. Um, it's a passage that's pretty well known, um, but often misapplied. Um, I think it's a passage that literally opens up speaking to a young man. Um, it opens up saying, uh, verse one, the words of, of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. So this is the king speaking of what his mother taught him. This is what she taught him. And then it goes on and it often, it, it, well, it goes on to talk about the righteous man and then the righteous woman. But it's often taught specifically to young women as to what they're supposed to be and the ideal for them and not taught enough to the young men. <laughs> um, so that's just kind of a, an interesting thing. It's directly spoken to the young men, but it's often directly taught to young ladies. Um, with that being said, let's pray and we'll get into the morning devotional. Father, we ask that you would speak to us through your word. May we understand the truth of it and may we live uh, to apply it lord and in all this may we see jesus as we learn through your scriptures in your name we pray amen so it starts off the words of king lemuel very likely that this is a, a nickname that was given to solomon by his mother so it's you know the words of king solomon but through in it but as a nickname from his mom the utterance which his mother taught him what my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. So she's kind of calling his attention. And she says, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert justice and all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. And so what we have here is the desire of a good mother for her son. And this is a little challenging, especially in our culture here in America. Often you're not an adult till you're 18. And so many times responsibility is not given to young boys. They're not raised to be young men. They're allowed to kind of be uh, perpetually uh, in their adolescence until all of a sudden they need to get a job and they need to go to college, right? Um, it shouldn't be that way. There should be this transition period that from very young, you're raising them to think like men. I'm very happy to know that my parents did that for me. And uh, there are people that didn't have that. And yet the Lord in his grace can make them into strong men very quickly uh, but to really set up your children for the best future, it starts while they're young to teach them, um, especially for boys, to teach them manhood versus um, just always playing, always being a joker, um, never taking things seriously, kind of always being light and fluffy with them. Um, discipline, structure, responsibility, those are the things that will make a boy into a man. And this is what this mother, Solomon's mother, wanted for him. So she calls his attention to a couple different things. She doesn't want him to be overcome by two things specifically, women and uh, immorality, women and immorality. Um, it says, do not give your strength to women, nor to the ways that which destroy kings. So she's going to put her focus on not being overcome by women later on in the chapter. Um, and we'll get to that. But then... Her focus here is nor the ways that which destroy kings. It is not for kings to drink and to be intoxicated. So the first thing she goes at is for a man to be a man and for a leader to be a leader, he shouldn't be overcome by women or by anything that could intoxicate him, influence him. And you'd have to be trying really hard to not see how alcohol can influence a person, destroy a person. Now, I don't think 
that you should dabble with alcohol very much. I think it's, it's one of those things that, yes, biblically speaking, we're called to not be drunk. And so a little bit here and there is okay. And that really has to deal with how much wisdom or foolishness you have, um, how you can be responsible and uh, what your convictions are and what culture you're in, because in different cultures, it's very much more acceptable and, and, and responsible. Um, and that's something that as well, for a young man, you need to figure out what your parents think about this and follow the rules. Um, it's not, of course, the law of the land, not until you're 21. And even then, uh, you want to be very wise with it because even a little can go a long way. And so best thing ever is to just stay away from it. Just stay away from it. And you might think that's impossible um, to ask your sons to do that or for a young man to think that he can stay away from it. Um, but here I am, 28, and I've had about this much alcohol in my entire life. So it is possible. And I don't say that to be boastful. I just want to um, say that if you want to have a high standard for your sons, or if you as a young man want to live up to a high standard, well, you know what? God can empower you to do so, as he has done with me. It's only by his grace. But alcohol can be very disruptive. And I think this can be applied to much more than just alcohol, just things that intoxicate in general, like marijuana, things like um, other influences, other things that can overcome you. I think even here, you might even want to throw in smartphones and the internet because the internet can be this overwhelming pressure all day long, notifications all day long, influences all day long, uh, pressure to think certain ways or do certain things to um, admire certain things and to oppose other things. And so even that can be something very dangerous. I heard one person say that if you aren't willing to give your son a weapon, then you probably shouldn't give him a smartphone because it takes maturity to have those kinds of freedoms, those kinds of liberties, because even simple things like Facebook and Instagram can be very intoxicating for people. And so she doesn't want him to be overcome by and anything that can overcome him. Because when you do, you begin to forget the law. You stop doing things that are right. You stop understanding what's true and what's wrong. You pervert justice. And we can see that in our common day, in our modern day. She actually says, give strength and strong drink to him who's perishing. And she doesn't mean like actually give him. It's kind of more like what verse 7 says, let him drink. It's more like leave it to the other people. You shouldn't have anything to do with it. Just leave it to other people because it's not for you if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a man. And then don't just be, um, it, she's not, she's saying don't be overcome by women and don't be overcome by immorality. And that immorality has kind of two parts, the immorality of intoxication and the immorality of abdication, letting go of your responsibilities. She says, open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth and judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. And this can be applied in so many different ways. And I really want to just leave it open-ended. This can be about being a good leader in your home once you're a grown man and have your own family. This can be about being a good leader in your church, being a good leader in your community, however that is, in your workplace. Um, speaking for those who are appointed to die, uh, it's this idea that the poor and needy will likely die because of their poor and neediness, because of their poverty and neediness. I think it also applies to those um, who unfortunately will, will die by abortion. They are speechless. They will die. They're appointed to it because of somebody else's decision. Um, a, a, a righteous, godly leader man will have a calling towards one of these many different uh, areas where people are needy and he'll step into it. Not every man can fight every battle, but I've been really blessed to see the different men who will go fix someone's car because they know that they need it to get to work and they happen to be the one who knows how. I've seen uh, men who are generous and put kids through college who aren't their kids because they see their need and so they want to help. It really comes down to what is God calling you to do and do it. Don't give up responsibility. In fact, go find responsibility. All right, that's already 10 minutes, so I want to speed it up here. The second thing is, you know, don't be overcome by intoxication and immorality. 
of intoxication or abdication, leaving your responsibilities. And then this whole other part is about the right kind of woman to be looking for because Proverbs, uh, I believe, 5 and 7 have a lot to do with the wrong kind of woman. Proverbs 31 is all about the right kind of woman. Who can find a virtuous wife? Her worth is far above the rubies. Her heart, the heart of her husband safely trusts her. She will lack no gain, or so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. This is talking about her work ethic, how she does things, how she treats her husband. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household, a portion for her maidservants. Uh, she's a good leader. She is a servant. She considers a field and buys it she, with, from her profits. She plants a vineyard. She's savvy with her money. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She, she works into the late night trying to do what's best for her family and her husband. She stretches out her hands to the, the staff and her hands to the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. See this idea of the spindle, she's actually working with her hands to produce uh, clothing or um, you know, garments, uh, blankets, and she extends her hand to the poor and the needy. I, I'm really blessed by our women's ministry because year after year they've given out gloves, socks, um, you know, hygiene supplies to the homeless, and they're fulfilling these verses right here. Uh, she's not afraid of the snow of her household, for her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes her tapestry. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. And notice that a man can't be a leader unless his wife is a leader with him. She doesn't have to do his work with him, but the idea that um, some women whatever they might be, can sometimes disqualify their husbands from what they should be. We're a team when you're married, right? She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. That is just, that's because she knows scripture, right? There's no other way to do that. She watches over the ways of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness, sitting around and doing nothing. Her children raise, rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. They see her value. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And that idea of fearing the Lord, that's what all of Proverbs have been about. She's wise. She's hardworking. She's not idle. Uh, she's responsible. She's righteous. She's honorable in the way she acts. And so she'll be praised for it. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. See where the elders are, where her husband can be, uh, because she is a good woman, her reputation will precede her. Now, this has often been misused to force a lot of young ladies into thinking they have to be a lot of things that they don't necessarily have to be. So here's my encouragement when it comes to this for the young ladies, for the moms who are trying to raise their young daughters, even for older ladies, um, what are you supposed to be? You're supposed to be biblical. You're supposed to be hardworking. You're supposed to be honorable. You don't have to do all these things. Not every woman is business savvy. Not every woman is uh, can you know really capable in the crafting area of making things with their hands. Not every woman is going to be all of these things, but you have a calling, you have a gifting, find it, pursue it, go after it. The focus is not to be all of these things, but rather to fit the, fit the bill, you know, kind of fit the, the model that you are not idle, that you're focused on others rather than yourself, that you're focused on character instead of outward appearance. If you can do those three things to be, you know, not be idle, to be focused on others and to be focused on character, then you're going to excel at whatever calling or gifting God has given you. And the right kind of guy will find the right kind of girl. If we raise all of our young men to be King David, to be Joshua, to be like Jesus, to be like Paul, then I think they will be blessed by also us raising our daughters to be more like Ruth 
and Esther and uh, Proverbs 31. But not everybody's King David, right? And not everybody's Paul the Apostle. We just need to find our callings, find our giftings, and run after them, pursue them to be responsible, hardworking, honorable. Uh, for a man to be a man is to not be overcome by, 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 by women, which could be in the form of, you know, lots of dating around and never settling down. It could be pornography. It could be just simply being weak and letting, letting the, the kind of being whipped in, in however you want to say that, um, or being overcome by immorality, intoxication, or abdication, leaving your responsibilities behind. If we can raise our young boys to be men and raise our young ladies to be women, uh, then, you know, the church will be better off, the community will be better off. And it's not about the pressure of everybody having to be David or Proverbs 31. Again, I want to really focus it. It's about finding your calling, finding that thing God's gifted you in and going after it with all your heart. The worst thing in Proverbs <laughs> is foolishness and laziness. And so you'll see here with these two examples of what a man should be and what a woman should be, there's no laziness and there's no foolishness. Now, how does that all point us to Jesus? Well, the best thing about knowing the, knowing the Father, knowing Jesus, knowing the Spirit, knowing who God, the one true God it really is, is that the ideals of masculine, um, honorable character and feminine, honorable character of what a woman should be and what a man should be is this, that God is just, God is a leader, God is caring and providing and protecting all those things that, uh, you know, you'd want a man to be. But yet Jesus also said that he wanted to nurture them like a mother hen. Jesus was kind and uh, soft-spoken at times, like a lady can be. Like Peter says, you know, a gentle and quiet spirit. Um, Jesus had some of those um, wonderful things that a woman could be, not because he was, you know, feminine or emasculated, but because he was truly God and God has the best qualities of a man and the best qualities of a woman, they come from God. When you have a pair of a man and a woman who are married and they walk with Jesus, they, they truly honor him, you're going to get the protector, provider, caring man and the nurturing, um, gentle, uh, merciful character of a woman. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a wonderful family at that point. I hope I made myself clear. If I didn't, just rewind and rewatch this because <laughs> that's just how it is sometimes. Okay, I think that's enough. God bless you guys. May you be encouraged to find what God's calling you to do and just pursue it with all your heart like a good man or like a good woman. Jesus will help you to do that. Let's pray. Father, bless those who listen to this message. May it encourage them and may they be um, empowered, Lord, to step out into what you're calling them to do. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.